better than two slippers? Four slipper action! Anyone else ever wanted to walk in with four slippers? <laughs> no, but I'm glad you did. Me too. without counting calories. I've lost 130 pounds and kept it off for six years. At the beginning of my weight loss journey, I was ready to lose the weight. I knew I needed to, but I really didn't know where to start. I wasn't ready to eat in, um, I wasn't ready to count calories yet. I knew I needed to be in a calorie deficit, but the thought of counting calories seemed really overwhelming and anything else that I had tried in the past, it wasn't sustainable. Then I realized there are lots of things that I could do that would help me get in a calorie deficit without counting calories. So I'm gonna share those with you. And because they were small changes, they were sustainable. I actually looked forward to doing them. They helped me stick to it. And because I had so much weight to lose, I was able to lose 50 pounds in three months while I was eating what I loved. We track calories now, like we count calories now, me yes. and Nicole. And a lot of people ask us, did you always do that? Well, no, we didn't. At the very beginning, this is what we did. And yep. it actually worked really well. And this is what we did to get the whole, actually total, 130 pounds. And Kyle has also lost the same amount of weight and kept it off for the same amount of time. And we did portion control all the way up until a year ago. That's when we were ready to start counting calories. So it's okay if you're not ready to. Let's start with the first one. And it was simple. We didn't change what we were eating, we changed how much by portioning out our food. So we bought a food scale, and this is actually very old. This is from Bed Bath & Beyond, it's called Perfect Portions. And we got this, like at the beginning of our journey, you can get a scale anywhere to help us weigh our food. We also had bought measuring cups and measuring spoons at Walmart, dollar store, to help us portion out our food. And we measured out according to the serving sizes on the backs of the packages. They're pretty much everywhere. And if you're looking for a fruit or something, you can just Google it, it will tell you. So you guys see how it says like, it'll tell you per third cup, per half cup. You can do that if you wanna be really accurate. That's where the food scale comes in because it'll say in the grams actually what a third cup is, 30 grams. So you take your scoop or your bowl or whatever, zero out the bowl, put it on your right scale, up. and there you go. Or if you're not ready for that, there are lots of prepackaged things with which Sassy and I also did. We bought the prepackaged stuff that was already portioned out. Like I love these minute rice because they come in perfectly portioned sizes. So if you're not ready for the measuring, it's already done for you. And this is like tuna and crackers all in one. So you don't have to worry about anything. And when you had, when you have emotional eating issues like me and Nicole did, the portions really, really helped us in the beginning because we could label them and say, hey, we got four of these tunas or six of these rice. Three of them are yours for the week, three of them are mine, so yeah. I can't go overboard. Yeah, and like we would literally go like this. Like um, I would label Sassy and I would put like Monday underneath. So I would not touch Sassy's Monday snack if I ate mine, that was it. I wasn't touching his snack because I didn't want to eat his food. And we would only keep in the house exactly what we needed to make it through the week. Yeah, and if you have to go day by day, two rice, you know, two of these tuna things. And so what that did is I figured out an estimate of what I was eating when I was 275 pounds and it was about 8,000 calories a day. So going from that to portioning out all my meals, I don't know because I didn't track calories, but I would say 2,000 to 2,500 was about what I went down to. So portioning my food automatically put me in a calorie deficit, but it didn't feel like it because I was loving what I was eating. It didn't feel like I was dieting. So that was the first thing. The second, the second thing was I made a, me a weekly meal plan for us and a grocery list. And I still make grocery lists. This is a current one, so don't laugh. It has like Halloween candy on it for other people. 
<laughs> and a birthday card. But anyway, this is what I did. So I would make the meal plan first and make out, I would write the portion sizes on too. So if we were gonna have say like oatmeal and peanut butter and fruit for breakfast, I would make sure all those things were on the grocery list. And I would put it on the meal plan, half a cup of oatmeal or whatever my portions were. That took away the excuses. We knew exactly what we were eating. We looked forward to it. We could check the schedule or the meal plan when we got kind of anxious about it. And putting the groceries on the list made sure we didn't buy more than what we needed or what we planned on eating that week. So it kept us on track that way. In the beginning, we did three meals, two snacks, and a dessert, I think. Yes, and that is actually a good point because we kept in portion treats. We ate a balance. The meal plan was full of all kinds of food, every food group. We didn't take anything away and we did have treats. And we made sure we put the treats on the list so that we didn't get things that we didn't want and we included treats so that we didn't feel deprived or like we were missing out. Yeah, we do like on the grocery list, one box of low calorie chocolate cookies. Yeah. And you know, etc. just enough for both of us. And I actually have some treats like, what I love about these is all of these are perfectly portioned. So these like bear paw brownies, they come in little packages. These were great for Kyle and I because once we were done, we were done and we got a sweet treat, but it was portioned. You know, things like the special K bars. And I had another one. I have been craving chocolate cake and I just found these at the store. They're little mini chocolate cakes. So I could eat one of these and stay in a calorie deficit and still have chocolate cake, just not a whole one because I would just keep eating if it wasn't portioned at a certain time. Yeah, a lot of the kids' snacks today are, are really small, actually perfect portions. Yeah, and they're really low calorie, so we love going in the kids' aisle when we're grocery shopping. So for example, three meals, balanced meals, protein, carbs, fats, Two then snacks. two snacks and then you know we would each choose a dessert yeah and most of the time it was like you know something like this and then half a cup of at the time there wasn't halo top so it'd be half a cup of low calorie ice cream and that was our treat pretty much every single day and we ate carbs pretty much every meal protein every meal and then fruits and veggies at every meal and a couple of healthy fats next we moved our body at 275 pounds for me and 375 pounds for Kyle, we had a lot of health issues. Like I had sleep apnea, Kyle got type two diabetes. We couldn't really do much. So we decided to move our body by walking because it was really the only thing we could do a little bit. And we couldn't do much. So we started with five to 15 minutes. We made a pack to just get out there and move. That combined with the portion control, sticking to our meal plan, and the walking, just moving when we weren't used to it. Our bodies were responding so quickly and we were loving it because we got to eat what we liked, including treats, and we set ourselves up for success. So, you know, five to 15 minutes for a little while, once we lost the first 50 pounds, then we were able to up it and go to half an hour and then 45 minutes and now we do an hour. But we started small and it didn't matter how much, it was about getting out there and being consistent. And me and Nicole had failed on so many fad diets and so many fad exercise programs yes. that this time we promised each other we're not gonna force ourselves to eat something we don't like and we're not gonna yes. force ourselves to do exercise we hate. And making the pact, we're just gonna move our bodies, we're not gonna time it, we're just gonna do it, and eating what we liked, it worked because we could stick to it, we actually enjoyed it. And then, this was another one that was huge, put us in a calorie deficit with us out even trying, it was stopping drinking liquid calories. So at the beginning of our journey, we were both drinking about seven regular cans of pop a day and like nothing else, no water or anything. And the Dr. Pepper that I like to drink was about 140 calories a can. So if you times that by seven, that's like a thousand calories about. And when I switched, I didn't change how many I was drinking. I switched to the diet pop. I saved myself a thousand calories in only liquid alone. So I literally went in a calorie deficit without missing the pop. I, it, because they all taste pretty similar, pretty much like the real thing. And it didn't even feel like I was dieting. So that was a huge one. And then if you're someone who likes to drink like cream in your coffee, 
You can have it, you can portion it out, or you can do what we did. We like to drink black coffee, but sometimes we'll put in the non-dairy milk because it's very low calorie and zero calorie sweetener. So you still get the sweet and the creaminess without the calories. And the last one we did, and then I'm gonna throw a bonus in for you, but the last one we did was prep our meals. This was super important because yes, we were portioning our food, yes, we had the meal plan and the grocery list, but if our meals were not prepped that were on the meal plan, if we were really hungry, we would pro we would end up eating things that we didn't really want to eat and way more of it. Yeah, we fell so. into that trap of like, okay, we got our list, we got our, you know, we bought our groceries, everything's good to go. <laughs> but we don't want to cook. But we didn't make it. It's after work, we're tired and we're hungry. So let's just go get fast food and eat it. Yeah. And not that it's bad, it's just that we wanted to eat a certain amount of cal well, eat a certain amount of food and a certain type while we were losing weight. So having meals prepped was very important. We bought these, we always get asked where these are from. These are from Walmart. I love them because you can put two different things in there. I like to do like the French toast and the fruit um, for my breakfast prep. But anyway, prepping the meals was perfect. And if we weren't overeating when our meals weren't prepped, sometimes we would skip them. And skipping also made us so hungry, we would eat way more than we wanted to later. Sets you up for failure. Yeah. So the bonus I wanna throw in is that we weren't ready to count calories, but we did journal our food for the first year. All we did was we had like notepads like this, like just lined paper, and every day we would just write exactly what we ate. And if we, you know, accidentally went off, like if we went off track that day, or if we stayed on track, we wrote everything down and we were honest if we went off track, or if we over scooped our peanut butter or something like that, we were honest. Because then at the end of the week, when we weighed in once a week, if we didn't lose weight, we could look back and say, oh, I went off track here, or I measured too much here, and then we could pull back, and then the next week we would have results and because the, we were counting. The accountability part, you can look back, and when you, there's no judgment, if you, you, know, you have a friend or a partner or whatever, don't judge each other for it. Just make a pact that no matter what you eat, you're gonna write it down, because at the end of the week, like Nicole said, you go over it and go, not only, pinpoint where you fell off track but why yeah. and you might notice a pattern like hey exactly. it's always late at night 10 p.m i go off the rails and then if you notice that then you can plan to have a meal that you like at that point so that it keeps you on track also if you're losing weight you can look back and go, oh, this is working. And then, you know, if you hit a plateau or something, you can look back and go, okay, this worked. I'll just slightly change this and then keep going with it. So that also we tracked our water and if we moved that day or not, because that all held us accountable to make sure that we stayed on track. And again, Kyle and I have lost 130 pounds each and we've kept it off for six years by making the small changes that we could sustain and by eating foods that we loved in portion. If you guys want to know exactly what we ate to lose our first and next 50 pounds, we have two weight loss guides in the links down below. Exact portions, exact meal plans, exact family friendly recipes that we made and ate and did. And we have a brand new guilt free cookbook. The link is also down below. It's all your favorite foods without the guilt and extra calories, all low calorie versions of your favorite food. And or you can watch these two videos. One, two, and then we're gonna lawn more out down. Right. And where's my flipper action? Okay, guys, we gotta walk out with the flipper action backwards. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Backwards, flipper action, backwards. Now we're forward. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See Thanks ya. for watching. Love you. Peace. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.